Hey, it's Mike here, and today I was all caps wrong about veggies. This video from Ken D. Berry, which I will be responding to. I was wrong about veggies in parentheses, plant problems 2022. This is a video that somebody sent to me, but I have not watched yet. And as you can tell, I'm filming in a different format. It's gonna be a hybrid react video so I can organically respond, not knowing what he's gonna say, but then I will also later add on some research. And this will be a little bit of a rougher video because I'm just going for it right now. You know, nothing is outlined in advance like normal, but I figured why not every once in a while do a video like this. So let's just g get it going here and see what this guy has to say. All right, here he is talking about all of his stuff. I was wrong about eating vegetables. Back when I made this video back in December of 2017, I still fully believed in the magical nutrition found in vegetables and fruits and other plants. Okay, so I don't know if you saw that, but it was keto-friendly vegetables. This guy's definitely low carb. And so I'm, I'm just gonna call it right now. He's gonna just be like anti-plant. Maybe, maybe he won't be, but let's just see him, let's see. Since then, after four years of deep dive research into human nutrition, human physiology, and human medicine, I've discovered that I was wrong about the magic in plants. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. Let's talk about what I've discovered in the last four years when it comes to eating lots of plants. Mm, I love the, the like I was wrong aspect of thing. I feel like that that definitely ties, you know, gets people roped in. This video that I made back in <clears throat> December 2017, I talked about seven low carb vegetables that at that time I thought you could eat as much of as you wanted and still realize all of the potential health benefits of a proper human diet. I found out in the recent years of deep research that you may just not be able to eat that many plants. And I've spent 3,000 hours on low carb, zero carb carnivore forums and I've decided that all plants are evil. That I'm calling it. He's gonna, he's gonna work his way into it. He's starting off soft. We'll see where he goes. And there's several reasons for that. And in this video, I'm gonna go through those reasons of why you may be one of the few people who should either severely limit the intake of plants, whether they're vegetables, fruits, or others, or you may need to eliminate them completely from your diet. So let's dig in. Okay, rip it, rip it, face palm right there. I mean, we've got, he's, he's already saying eliminate plants from your diet entirely. You know, we've, we see over and over again that especially more whole plant consumption is associated with lower mortality. And then to add a study here, it just shows the dramatic effect of vegetable intake. This is a pretty new study that came out in 2021 and just blammo right here. In the fully adjusted model, vegetable intake of the fourth quintile, which would be a 20th percent, had the greatest negative association with death compared to the lowest quintile of vegetables, 47% lower death. I mean, that is quite ridiculous and he's telling you that that's the problem vegetables are the problem i cannot find a study anywhere showing an increased association of mortality with vegetable consumption as you might assume and the amount of zero plant studies that we have is i mean you have like some basically collections of anecdotes uh published about carnivore diets but it's it's not looking good but let's see where he goes so the first reason is is that, is that it seems like many people and i'm one of these people i've been virtually plant free in my diet for the last three and a half years uh and that means no vegetables no fruits uh virtually no nuts no seeds and absolutely no joy i've been eating just fatty red meat and eggs <sighs> occasional chicken and pork and seafood that has why do they always have to go right to also the most carbon intense meat it always has to be like steak which of course is ruminant and emits way more than all those other meats i mean none of them are eco-friendly in my humble opinion imho i've been the entirety of my diet and i have not developed any vitamin or nutrient deficiencies i actually feel better now at 53 years well you technically have a fiber deficiency 97 percent of the us already does not get enough fiber he probably already wasn't getting enough fiber now he's getting zero fiber and there's a reason that people are recommended to have fiber again associated with lower mortality and to add a particular fiber related study we have this one here from 2022 actually which sees a very strong association between fiber consumption and all-cause death 
of about 27% lower with high fiber consumption. Years of age than I felt in my early 30s. So I think the first problem with, for some of us, not everyone, the first problem for some of us is that vegetables just contain too many carbohydrates. And these come in the form of digestible, soluble carbohydrates like sugars and starches. Uh, but then for some of us, even the fiber in these vegetables and other plants cause problems down the line, further down the digestive line. And so for some of us, we need to eat such a low carb diet that vegetables are just too high in carbohydrates. Vegetables are too high in carbohydrates. You realize that a lot of these vegetables are, are almost sort of de deficient of calories altogether. Like if you're talking about lettuce and, and probably a lot of brassicas, which includes kale and things like Brussels sprouts, which I think was maybe in his previous video, I saw some brassicas in there at least. But let's just look really quickly to chronometer. Hopefully I won't be too cut off here, but we've got, you know, let's just say we're, we're, we're rocking some Brussels, Brussels sprouts. Type it in together with me. A cup. A cup is like more Brussels sprouts than most people want to eat. Um, how many, how many car 50 calories for way more um, net carbs here. You probably can't see very well. You know, we're talking about 11 grams of carbs. Like that is ridiculously low. And this is so stupid that he's, he's afraid to be eating carbs from, from vegetables when there's almost no calories. Anyway, let's, let's get back to it here in the South. And so if you've stalled on your weight loss journey or you're having some kind of weird inflammation that you just can't get a handle on, it may be time for you to try the challenge that I talk about later in this video. Okay. Oh, f Weird inflammation that you can't get a handle on. This is this just like a, a subjective feeling of inflammation because once again, let, you know, let's just look at some studies real quick. And that claim is really funny because as this meta-analysis of 83 studies found, uh, yeah, higher intakes of fruit and vegetables led to both a reduction in pro-inflammatory mediators and an enhanced immune cell profile. All of these inflammatory markers and then vegans who eat the most plants, the most vegetables, have uh, you know lower C-reactive protein and put them put people on a vegan diet and their C-reactive protein inflammation marker goes down. You know, in general, we're talking about plants consumption, vegetable consumption being associated with lower inflammation, lower oxidative stress. These are antioxidants. Plant foods from this study, 64 times more antioxidants than animal foods. Th these aren't inflammatory foods. And then you might be thinking, oh well. I'm a very particular person who has a bad reaction to fiber. I have IBS or something like that. Of course, that would be the minority of people, and those people are often driven to a zero carb diet. And there's, you know, people who dedicate themselves to trying to make sure those people can still eat healthy plants. I think of gastroenterologist Angie Sadeghi there. I've done videos in the past of like ramping up fiber. But going to this study here, it is worth mentioning that yes, there are oligosaccharides that can, you know, rapidly create some gas production and discomfort, but there are people with IBS that can benefit from taking soluble fiber, for example. So for many of us, uh, the <laughs> vitamins and minerals, which plants are full of, there's no doubt about that. So if you look up on the USDA Food Data Central database, you'll see that vegetables like cabbage and kale and spinach are full of vitamins and minerals. I'm surprised he's willing to even say that. But the problem is, is that for many of us, they're not bioavailable, they're not bioabsorbable. Even though they're in there, we don't have access to them. So all the iron, for instance, that's oh, found in go. spinach. Calling it right now, anti-nutrients rant. Most humans only absorb about 1% of the iron that's actually in the spinach. And what makes it so difficult to absorb many of the- Okay, this is the point where we go, is this person citing research. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just scroll down. Really, he said 1%, 1%. Oh, absolutely not, just pulled out of the butt, just stuff that he's discounts for selling stuff and uh, you know, his Patreons and stuff. He is not citing research. I'm not surprised at all. And so where did this guy get this? You know, maybe it was from a page like this one right here, which says that you know, only 1.7% of iron from spinach is absorbed, but this is very likely from eating some 
you know, raw spinach or who knows what's even going on. But let's look at this study, which is really interesting because it actually looked at the percentage that people were absorbing from spinach and it was cooked spinach. I couldn't find a raw comparison, but I think most people go for the cooked spinach anyway. Raw spinach, pretty much just water. Uh, but we can see the chart here of the percentage of the iron that was absorbed from spinach. You can see that now it's closer to like seven to 15% not 1%, so objectively false in this particular situation. And you might be thinking, oh, well, you know, cooked spinach lowers the oxalates. That is actually true. However, this experiment went as far to add oxalates back to that spinach, and they say there was no statistically significant difference. In fact, some random guy absorbed more for no reason at 24%. <laughs> Looking to this study right over here. No, it is not the case that 100% of heme iron is absorbed anyway. We're talking about 15 to 35%. But then we have this, you know, range in plant foods of 2 to 20% of non-heme iron being absorbed. But it is also the case that there's a higher amount of total milligrams of iron in a lot of plants than animal products, which can make up for a lot of that. For example, here we have some spinach versus some steak and we can see looking at the spinach that we've got about 6.4 milligrams for what would be a, a serving that someone might eat and then for a serving of beef we have 2.9 and so you can see how things even out there the vitamins and minerals found in plants is that plants also contain something called anti-nutrients this can range from Call phytates it. to lectins to oxalates to tannins to protease inhibitors, to phytoestrogens. And all of these things make it very difficult for humans to absorb the vitamins and minerals out of- Thankfully, for a very long time, we have been eating these plants and just most most of these anti-nutrients, a lot of them are just removed in the way that we prepare foods. You know, some of the anti-nutrients like lectins just destroyed from cooking. And then we have ones like phytates, which first of all, our gut adapts to, as I've talked about in the past, where if you simulate a vegetarian digestive system, they digest, you know, essentially 100% of those phytates, which I've mentioned before, have potentially anti-cancer properties, but they're probably getting digested anyway, mostly, and then just soaking, fermenting, sprouting, and finally, of course, cooking with onions and garlic, as I've mentioned before, massively increases the bioavailability of these from, say, grains, for example. So. You know, this isn't really a concern. People, if we're looking to vegans over and over again now, we're seeing iron levels are not statistically significantly different, like from this Swiss study here. So it's being absorbed. And if he's just gonna throw out anecdotes about how it feels great eating all meat, I have plenty of people I know who have been anemic and then gone vegan and then their iron goes better. So this guy's, it's not like plants, you just can't get the nutrients from total BS. Many plants. Now I still do not believe that plants are trying to kill us. But I do believe that plants, some more than others, are, are trying to strongly discourage us from eating them. They definitely don't want us to eat their seeds because that's their progeny, that's their children. They want those seeds to be planted and to grow. And if we're eating- them, Animals also don't want to be killed and eaten. Just, just throwing it out there, man. Their seeds, like the florets of broccoli or all the nuts and seeds that many people can eat just fine, seemingly, on a keto diet. If, if many of us eat those, not only are we not going to be able to absorb the nutrition, the vitamins and minerals, but we're also going to realize that these foods cause inflammation in our body. Bro, plant foods do not cause inflammation. You know, you've heard all the theories of uh, inflammaging, inflammation and all of that. Well, how come all of these blue zones are very highly plant-based? I mean, they're, they're pounding down something like beans, which would have, oh no, anti-nutrient phytates. And yet legumes are the most important dietary predictor of survival in older people of different ethnicities. He's telling you to be afraid of a component of food, but that component is in foods most associated with longevity. Like he just wrong about this one. So this is not adding up, and once again, he's citing absolutely nothing but MD though, so uh, you can just listen to a family physician. And so that's another big thing is, is inflammation. Some people can eat veg and other plants just fine without any seeming inflammation. Others of us have to avoid them because they immediately start to cause inflammation in the gut, 
which can manifest as constipation, diarrhea, bloating, gas. Some people will start to have inflammation in their skin in the form of eczema or psoriasis or other rashes and skin conditions. Some people will start to notice inflammation in their joints, uh, such as reactive arthritis, osteoarthritis, and other things that we thought were chronic problems. But when we cut out the plants, all of a sudden that seemingly chronic permanent disability gets much better or goes completely away. All right, this brings me back to the whole like Michaela Peterson carnivore thing where you go on a diet that is so restrictive that it's it's basically impossible to know whether there was a food allergy. People tend to like, give up dairy at the same time as these things, which of course can be autoimmune inflammatory with molecular mimicry where the uh, molecules have similarities to our own molecules and our body attacks them. Um, I haven't seen very strong evidence for this with plants. Some people say, oh, nightshades. I, I also thought nightshades could be a connection, looked very deeply into it, and I could not find a compelling connection in the literature. And again, it's just, it's plants are associated with lower levels of arthritis. So I, I don't know, you know, start study here. Some people even notice a decrease in their mental health status if they eat too many plants. Bro, you're just throwing out everything. You know, I can do it. If you eat too many plants, all of a sudden everybody in your life, like your wife, will leave you. There's just too many antioxidants. What's your problem with oxidants, huh? Huh? <laughs> and so the challenge, oh, if you think any of these things apply to you, the challenge I'm going to put forth to you is the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs challenge. It's a 90-day challenge where for 90 days you can... You can die after 90 days because we try to eat as much processed meat and be... Did you just did you say, did you say some bacon? You need as much fatty ruminant meat. And so for domesticated animals, that would be beef, sheep, goat, camel, reindeer, wherever you live in the world, water buffalo. You can eat as much of that as you want every day, as many times a day as you want it. If you're hungry, eat. If you're not hungry, don't eat. I also love how he's like, Oh, we're afraid of like gut inflammation. So eat, eat class 1A and class 2A carcinogens, which are mechanistically shown to create gut inflammation, DNA damage, mutate DNA, and then cause cancer. That's, that's definitely the diet you want to be on. You can also include eggs and butter and bacon in this. So that Yeah, he did say bacon. I wasn't insane. He's, he's literally telling you to eat a class 1A carcinogen instead of plants because there's, there's some meaningful amount of carbs and there might be some of these anti-nutrients. Oh my God. Well, how about uh, saturated fat raises LDL? LDL is causally linked to atherosclerosis. We do not want to be having that right there. You know, ridiculous. But you bump up your fat to protein ratio and you're able to get plenty of delicious uh, appetite suppressing food. So this is funny also because we have you know, studies showing that uh, fibers, short chain fatty acids that are created in your gut do actually regulate appetite. I'd mentioned that even in my last video, and he's not citing any research here that it's gonna control your appetite. If anything, you're going to be eating a very small volume of food with a high calorie content, and it's not gonna volumetrically make you feel like you're full, and then people could probably overconsume calories here. Oh yeah, I was wrong about plants, and only through years of continued research on Reddit, zero carb, in human physiology and human nutrition was I able to tease out that, you know what? Actually, there's no magic in plants whatsoever. There is some nutrition, which is often not bioavailable and bioabsorbable to human beings. Uh, By the way, there is magic in plants. I have an entire video about magical effects of plants, lists of cool effects, even from aloe vera healing wounds faster, and obviously the effects of eating awesome plants on your body, like preventing macular degeneration and stuff like that from the antioxidants that build up in your eyeballs. So y'all wrong. Uh, there are also many anti-nutrients, which are will cause inflammation and prevent you from absorbing the nutrition in the plants. And for many of us, there's just too many carbohydrates in the plants in the quantity that we'd like to eat. I think the sign of a good scholar and a good doctor is being able to admit when you're wrong. You know? And citing absolutely zero research. It's cool, he's like playing the I'm wrong, I'm humble, I'm a humble wrong doctor who's really just been going hard into the zero carb, low carb carnivore crap for years and not citing any research and just saying words that sound kind of impressive, anti-nutrients. And I keep seeing this theme of like, 
it's counterintuitive health advice, so it must be right. The thing that sh all the studies show is healthier for you, and that, you know, parents have been saying eat your vegetables for years, it, they're just all wrong. They're just, every, everything is wrong, all the research and everything. And I was absolutely wrong about plants. Uh, as years go by, I'll probably make more videos just like this saying, hey, uh, I was wrong about that. So stick with me. If you haven't already subscribed, click that button and turn on the bell notifications. So his humble wrongness was being like, oh, avoid all carbs, but you can have some vegetables. Now he's saying avoid all carbs, including the menial amounts that are in vegetables. It's ridiculous. And obviously it's just becoming a more extreme version of the low carb stuff that we see just happening all the time, you know, the carnivore diet and on and on. So now I'm no longer organically reacting. I've gone through and added some studies, which you have already seen, including ones, uh, you know, fiber associated with lower mortality and vegetables associated with very significantly lower mortality. He is just, he's still wrong. He was more right in the past. It seems that he's just been more radicalized in that carnivore direction. Again, just because he's a, a family physician doesn't mean that he has like, a PhD in nutrition or anything, which you don't even need uh, to cite research, which he did absolutely none of. He sort of just said things like, only 1% of, of things from plants are absorbed. Like, what? That is just absolute BS. <laughs> anyway, it's clear, yeah, that he's just trying to play into fear around food. And then he also is pro probably trying to tap into that person who might feel a little bit of gas when they have some fiber. That can be, you know, your gut biome adjusting or somebody who has IBS perhaps not eating the right type of fiber and healing their gut first before eating that type of fiber or ramping it up fast enough and on and on. But I hope you like this format. Again, it's a little bit rougher. I don't need to tell you that, but this way, if I make videos like this, I could probably do you know, twice as many videos as I normally do. So I hope you liked it at all. Let me know down below what you think and feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one.